Hi everyone, it's Jerry. In 1987, Mikhail Tal played a blitz game against Anatoly Karpov. It was played in Brussels. It was a 30 move encounter. It wasn't perfect chess, but an interesting game uh, nevertheless. Something that's maybe to be expected when you have contrasting styles. Tal, of course, the tactical wizard. Karpov, master of strategy. Both will look to steer the game into positions that suit their style of play. So let, let's see how it plays out. We have Tal kicking off with e4, Karpov electing the solid Karakhan defense. With c4, this is going in for an accelerated Panov attack, the center being liquidated quite a bit, and with that comes an isolated d pawn, but it transitions to now a hanging pawn structure after the capture on c3. Going forward with a kingside Finchetto is black, white establishes a pawn in the center. Bishop d3, both sides castle. The queen knight comes out. All pieces need to get working. Uh, the rook now on half open file. Rook to e8 to facilitate e5, but with bishop g5, that's not available for just the moment. And now bishop to e6. So with this last move, what is it looking to do? Well, these hanging pawns, you need to look to restrict them in some way, and that's its main aim, with maybe knight to a5 to follow. We get to see none of that, however. Rook takes bishop. Sacrifice. What do you get in return for it? Well, uh, the first thing that cries out is these uh, double pawns, to me at least, these double pawns. And additionally, these, uh, the king side is a bit more weak. This f pawn is no longer around to watch over the g6 pawn. So these guys right here better stay put. You could also view it as white now having the bishop here. And to be a bit more exact, the light square bishop is the one that I would give more weight to because it has no counterpart. And if either one of these pawns move, uh, there is just no repairing uh, the light squares around this king position. So first order of business is to do what exactly? Well, it's to hit the weakest link, namely e6. And with these next few moves, we're seeing white just put pressure on e6 and black having to defend. Queen d6, queen e2, knight to d8. There's not a better way to defend than knight to d8. King f7 gets hammered immediately with the bishop to f4. Hits the queen of course, vacates g5, and the bishop's immune from capture due to a mate in two. So king f7 is just crazy. Knight d8, rook e1, Rook to c8, there's, well, there's still, uh, well, it's not needed for black to defend against e6 right here. Going forward with these types of captures, well, there's just no attack at this point anymore. Black is winning. So, need to be cautious about getting material back. You're looking for an attack here. Keep the queens on the board and instead tuck the bishop, excuse me, not tuck the bishop, but rather reroute the knight. Defends the bishop and looks to pivot on that e4 square. King gets out of the, uh, out of that diagonal. Very, very sensible move. It's out of the pin. Knight e4 posts up, hits the queen. Queen c7 keeps pressure on something, the bishop and the pawn. Bishop backs up. And now e5. Some action in the center, but it's something that Tal ignores and plays h4 instead. It's pretty surprising to see this type of move played with the queen still on the board. Still a lot, a lot of pieces on the board right here, but its main aim is to do what exactly? It's to weaken these light squares, trying to induce this g-pawn to move and then focus eventually on the h7 square. Um, one alternative would be to play d5. That also looks pretty appealing. It boxes out the knight and it really makes this knight shine on e4, blockading this uh, pawn on e, and, well, it's just a complete domino effect, isn't it? Blockades this pawn, and this bishop looks uh, very, very silly, just staring at its own pawn. Anyhow, it's an alternative, but it's something much more direct, h4, really coming right at black. Captures on d, h5. No need to just be recapturing its main aim. You have to follow through. You do h4 to play h5. If you're not going to be able to do both, h4 is a waste of time. So g takes h, and this is a serious error. Uh, what would have been better is queen to b6. And if there is a capture, well, the queen comes over to recapture, and she's 
a very, very good defensive piece, actually, and black is the side who's better. We don't have that, though. Queen b6 is not played. G takes h was played, and uh, this is a mistake, and so too is white's next move. White's next move was to take on h5. That is not the best move. What is the best move? If you'd like to, pause the video, see if you can find the best move for white. Okay, the best move for white in this position is knight f6, exploiting the pin on the e-file. If bishop takes knight, bishop recaptures. You have to recapture, and this is convincing enough. White is winning the queen, at the very least. So, uh, one quick sideline would be, well, if you're not taking the knight and you're playing here, well, knight takes h7. This is going to be all the more powerful when you capture on h5, because now when the knight moves deadly discovered checks, there's not going to be a good defense for black in this position. We don't have that. Taking on h5 was a mistake, and white taking on h5 is a mistake. So, um, something typical to see. I don't know what the time situation was, but again, it is blitz. Mistakes are going to happen. Rook to f8, getting it off of that e1 square was being attacked and now it's at least a bit more active on a half open f file. Bishop c2, these go hand in hand. h4, h5, you're doing it to weaken the light squares, you're doing it so that the bishop can then put pressure on that h7 point. Queen e5 centralizes herself, pins the bishop, pins the knight, but the knight really isn't pinned. It actually moves in this position with the knight g3 and white invests some more material to displace the queen. Queen takes rook, king h2, the queen is a bit off sides. These, this rook on f8, excuse me, c8, the knight on d8, not doing a whole lot. The bishop and rook are maybe the only ones around to defend, but it's a difficult defense to come up with here for black. Surprisingly, there is uh, a move which will allow the position to remain equal. That's what the computer will say, but um, with the two humans playing, that's very, very difficult. I, I doubt that this game would end uh, in a, in, a, in a peaceful way. What is the move here to be played? Well, what Karpov tries is h6, and this just gets crushed. We have bishop takes pawn. There's not going to be a defense, but there is a defensive move in that of, can you see it? The defensive move is bishop h6. Seems very weird to put a piece in the way of, uh, or just putting a, a bishop in a spot where both the queen and bishop would be taking it, but Bishop takes bishop, allows rook f7, and h7 is being defended. And same thing with queen takes h, rook f7 yet again, and um, the game continues. But uh, that was not played. Pawn h6 was played, and again, bishop takes pawn. King tries to run, but he's not going, uh, he can't go anywhere. Bishop takes bishop, there's just no defense. Uh, what is tried is rook takes f2, but now that's this is running into a mate in 3. Tal ends up going forward with uh, a variation that ends up in a mate in 4, with starting with uh, queen h7, queen g6, all very forcing, much easier to calculate when each move comes with a check. And after this final move, bishop h6 discovered check, Karpov ends up resigning. Uh, king in the corner, take your pick, g7 or h7, that'll be mate. So, an interesting game. I hope you enjoyed it, and that's all for this video. Take care. Bye.